and gentlemen, it would appear that my kitty cat is going to help me film this one. She's very cute. Okay, let me put on my glasses, we'll get started. Ever since I was a kid, uh, the study of gods, mythology, magic, and their relation to each other has absolutely captivated me. Uh, be it the Valar, you know, the Seven, or any number of pantheons, really, from around the world, from literature, anywhere. I've always loved studying and researching the gods of people around various fantasy worlds as well as our own. And the Cosmere is no different. I've loved researching and theorizing about the Shards, the Cosmere's gods, uh, ever since they were first mentioned. But unlike The Lord of the Rings or A Song of Ice and Fire, we still have new books coming out, which makes it all the more exciting to dive into the lore and speculate on what's to come. So today, we're gonna take a look at each of the 16 shards of the Cosmere in detail, like a lot of detail, investigate how they got where they are, look at how their magic manifests, and dive deep into any other interesting facts that we can find about them. I'll see you right after the title. Okay, I've gone ahead. <laughs> I can't. I've gone ahead and adjusted the focus. It should be easier to see Kitty now. There we go. Hi. Okay. To understand the nature of shards and what exactly they are, it's important that we briefly talk about where they came from, right? Uh, in the beginning, there was only one real god in the Cosmere, and this was named Adonalsium. It created people and planets and proceeded with, you know, generally godlike things. But something strange and mysterious seems to have happened to Adonalsium, and the choice was made by 16 individuals to shatter this one god into 16 equal parts, known as shards. Each of these shards holds one divine attribute, which informs all of their decisions and planning. As a few simple examples, we have Cultivation, whose MO is uh, to cultivate, grow, and nurture things, and Autonomy, who is, you know, mainly focused on establishing many autonomous and self-reliant regions throughout the Cosmere. The power that these shards consist of is wielded by a vessel, that is to say, a mortal that has taken the shard upon themselves and has ascended to a state of near godhood. And while it is a vessel that controls the power of a shard, the shard itself starts to influence its vessel's decision making after a little bit of time, which, you know, warping its vessel to better suit the intent of the shard. This is more detrimental to some vessels than others, but it does have an effect on all of them. It should also be noted that the magic systems that evolve around these shards tend to share characteristics of the shard's intent. For instance, endowment's magic system revolves around breaths, uh, a type of investiture that is bestowed upon birth and can then be given and received freely. Or, to put it in other words, a breath is a magical gift that is endowed upon an individual to do with as they please. Without further ado, let's dive in and take a closer look at the individual shards themselves, what they've been up to, where they are, and what they're planning, or at least a good idea of what they're planning. We'll start in alphabetical order with... Ambition is an interesting example to start with for a few reasons. Indeed, it no longer actually exists, uh, at least as far as we're aware. Its vessel was Shodel, a race of four-armed humanoids we've never met, living on a planet named Yolin that we've never seen. This is mostly an interesting example. We've lost Cat. 
we'll probably have her back soon. This is mostly an interesting example though because of just how messy this shard's death was. As a bit of backstory, uh, another shard named Odium's whole deal has been to travel around and splinter these shards further so that they can't oppose him. He first did this with Dominion and Devotion, but kind of screwed the pooch on that attempt. Uh, he trapped their collective investiture in the Cognitive Realm, making so it could potentially be reformed or reutilized at some point. He did not make the same mistake when he found Ambition, electing to critically wound the shard before letting another shard, Mercy, finish it off. Or at least that's what we think we know about that whole situation. Everything we think we know about Ambition is a bit murky in general. Indeed, uh, not a whole lot is known about how Odium actually accomplished this splintering. But one thing that is quite clear is its profound effect on the entire solar system. There are scars in the spiritual realm where the shards battled and the main planet in the Threnodite system Threnody, is slowly being consumed by some sort of... Uh, something. Frankly, not much is known about what's happening to Threnody, but its people were forced to flee to an entirely new continent on their planet where they encounter shades that haunt the forest and kill literally anyone that doesn't follow their rules. They're called simple rules. Now, how these shades came into existence is mysterious, but it's definitely tied in some way, shape, or form to the splintering of ambition. Somehow the leftover investiture from ambition's shattering is twisting and shaping the souls of the dead, forming them into spooky ghost things. Chances are we'll be seeing Threnody again, but whether or not we'll be learning more about ambition itself is anyone's guess. Okay, let's talk about autonomy. Oh, hi, cat. Oh, we're in a playful mood. Autonomy is one of the more interesting shards on this list because of how it goes about its business. Unlike other shards that primarily invest in a singular planet, autonomy seems to jump around, uh, setting up minor invested deities. Yeah, she's being autonomous. Autonomy seems to jump around, setting up minor invested deities that can survive on their own before finding another planet, setting up a minor deity, rinse and repeat ad finitum. Now, Autonomy has set up a multitude of avatars on various planets around the Cosmere, all self-sustaining and, well, autonomous of one another. How they all interact, or if they can interact at all, is unknown at this point. Now, there are a few planets that have been confirmed to have avatars of Autonomy living on them, the most prominent among them being Taldane. Autonomy also has avatars on First of the Sun, as well as many others we don't really know about. In fact, the true extent of autonomy spread throughout the Cosmere is unknown, but it could potentially have gigantic impacts on future Cosmere stories. One thing that is known for certain is that at some point in the recent past, autonomy sealed off Taldane completely in the Cognitive Realm, preventing anyone from entering or leaving the planet. Whether this is a part of some larger plan or some sort of impulsive act by the Shard is completely unknown. Let's move on to Roshar and check out one of its three resident Shards. Uh, cultivation is one of the three shards of Roshar and has presumably resided there since a short time after the shattering of Adenalsium. Cultivation's whole intent is about taking things and, well, cultivating them into something greater. Her influence is evident in the magic system of the Knights Radiant as well as the Old Magic, a soft magic system on Roshar that grants individuals a single boon as well as a single curse if they are deemed worthy. Though she has had a large impact on the history of Roshar, it should be noted that this influence has mostly been from the shadows. She chooses to accomplish her goals through subtle change over time rather than rapid progress and is witnessed only rarely. Uh, but she has been very active recently, choosing to speak with three separate characters when they go to visit the Night Watcher. As a side note, the Night Watcher is kind of like Cultivation's pet spren, and she's the one that people seek to receive the actual boons and curses. 
Oh, also cultivation is a dragon, which is pretty cool. <laughs> no clue what she looks like as a dragon. We haven't actually seen a dragon in dragon form on the page yet, but uh, hopefully we will soon. We'll be seeing much more of her in Stormlight, and I personally can't wait to see what her plans are in book five and beyond. Devotion and Dominion are two shards that both settled down on the planet Cell, but it wasn't long before Odium came calling. Odium, and actually possibly Autonomy, splintered these two shards, trapping their collective investiture in Cell's cognitive realm. Then things get real weird. Though the shards themselves were splintered and their vessels dead, the power of Dominion and Devotion came together in the cognitive realm to form a new entity called the Door. Every magic system on Cell is powered by accessing the Door in some way, shape, or form, and channeling the raw, vesselless power of these two shards into various usable forms. In fact, I have a whole video talking about just that where we dive deeper into Cell's magic as well as its history. Suffice it to say though, that the door's continued nebulous shardic status will be a big plot point going forward in the Cosmere. Now, whether the door will continue to be utilized in its current state, be reforged into shards, or some weird third option looks to be a big question going forward for the planet cell. After all, uh, who knows what could happen over the next couple of books, right? Okay, endowment. So endowment has settled down on the planet Nalthus for now, uh, possibly after having created it herself. Her divine intention seems to be primarily concerned with the concept of giving, and indeed everyone born on Nalthus receives what is called a breath, an equal portion of endowment's investiture that is given freely to all citizens. And this breath can do many things if you know how to use it. Uh, the whole magic system revolves around giving this breath to innate objects to awaken them, or essentially give them life, to endow them with life, if you will. Endowment's plans for the future are not well known at all, but she seems content to stick around Nalthus for now, ruling over her domain and giving freely to her citizens. Also, Endowment's vessel is possibly a dragon. Uh, words of Brandon are a little unclear on this. He kind of appears to contradict himself at one point, but oh well. More importantly, Endowment had a direct hand in creating Nightblood, an awakened sword with the power to absorb almost any amount of investiture given enough time. Um, it's super wild. It's essentially a weapon of mass destruction, and Endowment's motivations for helping bring the sword into existence are completely unknown as of now. But it is unlikely that she brought it into the Cosmere just for fun. She's not whimsy after all. We'll be paying very close attention to both Nightblood and Endowment in the future, and I'll make sure to update you on any interesting new information that we're gonna get out of Nalthus. Okay. Let's talk Odium. Odium is exactly what the name implies, right? Passionate, unfiltered rage, hatred, derision, and he's been doing everything in his power to make sure he's the only shard that has any say at all. From day one, his plan's been simple. Find the shards that pose the greatest threat, eliminate them, backstab everyone that helped him do this, and then decimate every other remaining shard, leaving him the sole shard and de facto ruler of the entire Cosmere. Uh, and he was actually making some pretty good progress at first, having taken out at least four other shards directly or indirectly, dominion, devotion, ambition, and honor in that order. That's a full quarter of the total shards, and he was well on his way to total domination when he got bogged down in the Rosharan system. He somehow was trapped in the system via the Oath Pact, uh, locked away on Braze by honor and possibly some involvement of cultivation as well. And he's been there for the last like 4,500 years, simply waiting for his chance to escape. 
At the beginning of the Stormlight Archive, he's in a better position to escape than he has been in millennia, and all bets are off once he gets out. Will he escape from his prison? How does one keep from getting mad after multiple millennia trapped on a barren rock in space? What would conflict look like in the Cosmere if Odium were to escape? Would he even have the same goals after all this time, or would the vessel have been changed by the power somehow? Now, these are all questions that we should be keeping in mind while reading about Odium, as he's sure to play a large role in the future of not just Stormlight, but the rest of the Cosmere as well. Along with Cultivation, Honor is one of the main two shards on Roshar. He came over with Cultivation after the Shattering and acted as God alongside her for quite some time, honestly, until disaster struck and Odium came calling. Now, through the sacrifice of 10 humans, known as the Heralds, Honor sealed Odium away on Braze, trapping Odium in the Rosharan system, but leaving him unable to complete his goal of becoming the sole shard in the Cosmere. But trapping Odium took a large toll from Honor, and over the centuries, the cracks started to show. A few millennia before Stormlight Archive starts, Honor was well and truly splintered, his vessel dead. Now, one of the biggest unanswered questions in the Cosmere so far is whether or not a shard is able to be reassembled after a splintering, and I believe it's one that Sanderson is planning to examine with Honor as a case study. Without getting into any spoilers, I'm going to wager that we'll have a pretty good answer as to whether a shard can be reforged by the end of Stormlight Book 5. Now, I personally think that we're going to see the return of Honor, but I could see Sanderson deciding not to bring him back or to bring Honor back in some warped, weirder form. Either way, I can't wait to find out. Um, I can already hear some of you saying that Honor dying is a spoiler, but the second chapter of Stormlight Archives is called Honor is Dead. Invention is where we start to get in some really foggy territory. Literally all we know about this shard is that it exists. That's it. We have literally only one mention of this shard in the entirety of the Cosmere so far, hidden in an epigraph of Rhythm of War. I'm honestly so fascinated by what a shard with this intent could create and accomplish given a bit of time. Um, I really hope we see this shard's homeworld or wherever it's operating out of sooner rather than later, but chances are we still have a little bit of time until we learn anything more about Invention or its vessel. Sad face. Okay, Mercy. Uh, Mercy is another shard we know very little about, with our first mention of it also coming during a Rhythm of War epigraph. Unlike Invention, though, Mercy gets a small bit more information released about them. Um, apparently, they were present when Odium splintered Ambition, but the full extent of their involvement with either Odium or Ambition is completely unknown. We know that they were there, and the general consensus among the fans is that Mercy Mercy helped wound Ambition in some way, or finish them off as a, like, sort of mercy killing, if you will. Um, honestly, we'll probably be getting more information about them soon, but I don't know how much we're actually going to know until later on in the Cosmere story. Okay, let's talk Preservation and Ruin. Preservation and Ruin are the two resident shards on Scadrial at the beginning of Mistborn's Final Empire. They decided to work together after the Shattering, creating the entirety of the planet of Scadrial from scratch. From then on out, it was almost nothing but conflict. As you may have been able to guess, uh, these two shards don't pair super well together, and violent conflict between the two of them was near inevitable. By the beginning of Mistborn Era 1, the two shards have reached an equilibrium of sorts, uh, with Preservation having trapped Ruin, not unlike Odium was trapped on Braze. But the mechanics are a bit different. While Ruin's magic system is tied directly to 
ruining things. I mean, it's basically magic stabbing. Preservation's magic system is a bit more indirectly tied to the act of preserving things. Allomancy, as it is known, is passed down through genetic lineage. So I suppose it could be argued that the magic system is being preserved through genetics, but that may be a bit too abstract. Now, one of the most interesting things about these two shards is the magic system they've created through their combined powers, called Ferrochemy. It allows a person to store attributes in metal and draw on them later. I can only think of one other system where two shards have combined. All This is all cats. All cats this video. I can only think of one other system where two shards have combined to make one magic system, and that's the Knight's Radiant, which is kind of a special case in and of itself because of spren that allow it to exist. Now, it's super interesting that two shards diametrically opposed to each other were able to create a system using their combined powers. Okay, Mittens? Now that we've explored all the shards that we know a decent amount about, let's quickly go over a few of the more arcane shards hiding throughout the Cosmere. Oh, cats. Okay, I've traded one cat for another. Uh, and just like that, I've lost both cats. Let's talk about the final four shards, shall we? As a quick note, one of the next few shards is from one of the secret projects. Um, I'm not gonna be going into any element of the plot at all. Uh, so you don't need to worry about that. But if you don't wanna know anything about the secret projects, here's the time code to click to right now. Okay, final four shards. To finish off this list, the final four shards are all entities that we know close to nothing about, and that have only been mentioned in either passing or epigraphs. First off, we have Valor. Much like Invention and Mercy, Valor was first mentioned in the epigraphs during Rhythm of War, and almost nothing more is known about them. This isn't canon, like, at all, but I can't help but think of gladiators when I think of Valor. And I fully expect that gladiatorial matches will be an integral part of Valor's planet, or else I will riot. Next up, we have Virtuosity, another shard that we know almost nothing about, but one that comes from a different source than the Rhythm of War epigraphs. If you know where this is from, you know. If not, come watch this video late next year, it'll make a lot of sense then. Either way, there is one very important thing about Virtuosity that should be known. She apparently splintered herself. Yeah, you didn't hear that wrong. She apparently saw some reason to rip apart the investiture that makes herself up and found a way to accomplish that. I don't even know where to begin theorizing about this, so I'm just gonna hold off completely for now until I can talk in more detail about it. Suffice it to say, Virtuosity's main concern is art and artistry, at least we think. Whimsy is the last shard to be mentioned in the Rhythm of War epigraphs, and much like the others mentioned there, we know very little about the details of Whimsy's existence. But Brandon has spoken a bit about them, and apparently their magic system has to do with kites? Seems fun, and I really can't wait to hear how the heck that works. Who knows when they'll show up next and where? because we don't know what planet they're from. The final shard on our list is technically unknown, but we'll do our best to speculate wildly on what it could be anyways. Fans have speculated that the final shard has something to do with experience or intelligence for some time, with names such as wisdom and prudence having been thrown around by fans. Others have speculated that this shard has to do primarily with survival because of an old word of Brandon, but that's really the only evidence we have of this. And if the shard did have to do with survival, I would argue that a better word to describe it would probably be perseverance, but hey, that's just a theory, a game. Okay, so this video is technically done. I've talked about all 16 shards, but some of you out there are still going, but wait, aren't you forgetting something big? And yes, 
I still have one bonus shard to talk about. The thing is, I can't really talk about its existence without spoiling something big from one of the major properties. If you know what this is, you probably know what this is. If you don't, here's what I'll say. I'm only gonna talk about the lore aspects of this shard and won't go into any information on who its vessel is, its current status, its role in the story, etc., etc. If you don't mind spoilers having to do with purely the lore, you should be good to keep continuing on. If you're apprehensive at all though, feel free to skip to this time code. Okay, we all ready? With that out of the way, let's talk about... It is time to talk about Harmony. Okay, so what is this shard anyways? Essentially, something big happens and kills two of the bigger shards on our list that we've been talking about, which by extension leaves their raw power free for someone else to take up. And it is taken up, but by someone who has the ability to wield both powers at the same time. And thus, the two shards are combined in one person, creating an entirely new shard. Now, this vessel chooses to call themselves Harmony, as ideally the two shards that combined it would be working together within the vessel in harmonious fashion. However, this doesn't necessarily end up being the case, and Harmony is left with myriad problems as a result of the two shards that make it up being, um, they don't play the best together. Whether or not this crisis is resolved is a major issue going forward, um, and its potential consequences could have a gigantic impact on the Cosmere as a whole. If you're interested in Harmony, and you have no idea what I'm talking about, what the two shards are or anything, just keep reading. Okay, so that about finally wraps up the video. Um, but I do have a little bit of homework for you guys. I want you to go down into that comment section and I want you to tell me what your favorite shard is and why, because I'm really curious. Uh, it's one of those questions where everyone I talk to has a completely different reason what their favorite shard is and why that's their favorite shard. Uh, and I value your voice. I want to hear from you guys. Let me see if I can get the cats back in here for one last cameo appearance. Okay, I could only wrestle. <laughs> I could wrestle zero cats up to come out and say hello. Well, colors, that's been fun talking about all that with you. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Feel free to like this video. Feel free to comment. Feel free to subscribe. Uh, make sure to hit that notification bell. Lore of the worlds. Peace out.